Stafford, this shit fire. This shit fire. What's up guys? Today I want to take the time to talk about how I got my first programming job and how I did it without a CS degree or bootcamp. So before I get started, uh, I want to talk about my background. I graduated in May 2020 with a degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Notre Dame. After graduation, I had an offer to work for the US Air Force, contingent on me passing a security clearance, which could potentially take months or even a year. I'd been thinking about making a jump to software engineering since earlier that year. So while waiting for my security clearance, I came up with a study plan. And what do you know, at the end of August 2020, I was still waiting on my security clearance um, with no end in sight. So I dropped the Air Force offer and I began self-studying full-time. So what was my plan? Well, simple. All I had to do was study 12 hours a day, every day, for six months. So that's how well my initial plan went. I wasted a good part of September 2020 just playing league. And at this point, I had to decide whether I want to get a job or play more league. Before I tried studying again, I spent a lot of time planning out and researching the best way to get a programming job. And I found that it really came down to two fundamental goals that you need to achieve. The first goal is to get interviews, and the second goal is to pass the interviews. To get the interviews, I need a good resume with projects relevant to the companies that I am applying for, and I also need to put myself in a position where I can network and get referrals. In order to pass the interviews, I need to do the appropriate interview preps, um, so preparing for technical interviews as well as behavioral interviews. With these high-level goals in mind, I started sketching out a new study plan. So I broke my prep down into two phases. The first phase is to study independently, and the second phase is to get practical experience. In both of these phases, I would be working towards goals 1 and 2. So phase 1, independent study. This is essentially doing anything that I can by myself to prepare for the two goals. Before I did this, I did some research on what the most common types of programming jobs there are, and unsurprisingly, it's web development. So I chose to center my studying around web development. This means that I went through most of the modules on a website called Free Code Camp. Um, I did a bunch of front end um, and a couple of back end projects. At the same time, I would start doing one to two lead code questions a day, uh, starting with the easy ones and working towards the medium. I won't go into too much details here because the resources I use are all free and online, but I'll link them in the description. Phase two, getting practical experience, is I think where most people who self-study uh, run into trouble. Around December 2020, I realized that I needed to start looking for opportunities where I can work with other people on projects um, or just get relevant experience working in a group in some way. So I applied to three programs. The first one was called Recur Center. This is a programming retreat that allows you to work with other people who are also programmers um, with varying levels of experience. The second one I applied to was called Colab Lab. It's a similar idea. Um, you get to work with other early career developers in order to uh, improve your skills. The third one I applied to is called Major League Hacking Fellowship. This MLH fellowship is a little bit different in that they will actually match you up with some of their partner companies and you can essentially do an internship. What all three of these programs have in common is that they don't require you to have any previous experience and at the same time they don't require you to be a student so pretty much anyone can apply to them. So long story short the only program that I was accepted into is Recur Center and it actually turned out that this was probably the best thing that I could have gotten into. So 
the way Recurve Center works is that they assign you to batches. My batch started in January 2021 and ended at the end of March 2021. During this time, I focus on hitting my two main goals, right? So first one, get the interview. Second one, pass the interview. In order to work towards goal one, I found others who are also interested in working on web development projects, and I asked them if they wanted to work in a group project. So through this, I got two full stack apps and I had experience working with other people. The second way that I worked towards goal one was by joining someone on an open source project. And this is a very common thing at Recurse, I would say, where people tend to have their own projects. And a lot of the experienced programmers would have really cool projects that you could potentially just uh, ask to be involved in. So that was what I did, and it taught me a lot about how to write high quality, well-tested code. So the other thing that I did at Recurse was work on interview prep. The way I did this was there used to be a daily recurring meeting where people would join in, pair up, and just work on a couple of lead code problems together. The main benefit of this is that it taught me how to solve a problem while also articulating my thoughts. And this was especially important in coding interviews. The second thing that I took out of this was that lead code really just came down into recognizing patterns and then solving the problems. And I learned a lot of strategies on how to do this from people who were way better than me at doing lead code. By mid-March, my resume was ready. And at this point, I'd done all the interview prep that I could. My resume was filled up with projects that are relevant. So the only thing left was to start applying. And again, here I kept in mind goal one, right? So I thought about what would best improve my chances of getting the interviews. So one of the things uh, that I did was to continually reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn whenever I sent an application or before I sent an application. The second thing that I did was I asked Recurse for referrals. So the thing about Recurse Center is that they are a third party recruiter and they're partnered with a bunch of companies. Actually, one of the first companies that I started interviewing with was a company called Hassan River Trading, and this was through a Recurse Center referral. But around April 2021, I started getting my first interviews. And at this point, I asked myself, is there anything else I could do in order to best set myself up for success? And I thought for a while, and there was actually something. In my undergraduate intro to aeronautics class, I had a Japanese professor. And before our first midterm, he told us, know your enemy. The idea is that he is our enemy. And in order to succeed on this midterm, we would do best to anticipate what kinds of questions he'll ask and then prepare for them. So I applied the same mentality to job applications. I tried my best to predict what kinds of questions will be asked and then prepare for those. A lot of times when I get an invitation to interview, I would ask the recruiter what types of questions I can expect to see on the interview. I found that the interview questions generally broke down into four different categories. The first category is a typical short response question about some specific technology or computer science. This is kind of something that you either know or you don't. And if you don't know it, you're probably unqualified for the job anyway. The second type of interview is your typical coding interview question. And um, as you all know, you just keep grinding lead code until you can do these. A third type of interview is uh, system design interviews. Uh, for this type of interview, I generally prepared by going through a course called Grokking the System Design Interview, as well as a GitHub repository called the System Design Primer. The last type of interview is a behavioral interview. And I prepared for behavioral interviews by building out a story grid. So this is essentially a grid uh, in which you list out all the common behavioral questions, and then uh, from your own experiences, come up with stories to fill each of those. And assuming you start your grid with the correct questions, you can have a story for almost any situation they can throw at you. I got the strategy from the Cracking the Coding interview book, and I'll uh, list the specific section in the description below. After this, it really just comes down to luck. You just have to keep trying over and over and learning from your failures each time, and uh, eventually you get it. Uh, for me, I got really lucky and I got my first two offers uh, around May 2021. 
So that's my story and I hope that helps. Obviously the resources that I use in my timeline might not work for everyone, but I think the general strategy applies. And that is starting with the fundamental goals and then breaking them down into milestones and actionable tasks that you can complete. To summarize what I did, I worked towards uh, getting an interview by working on relevant projects and putting myself in positions that would allow me to get referrals. Uh, to pass the interview, I tried figuring out what the company is looking for, what types of questions they're going to ask, and then prepare for those. Essentially, I just needed to know my enemy. See you guys next time.